Hey guys, welcome to my video. Um, this time I'm going to be looking at uh, in-depth itemization for phase 3 as a soul link warlock for PvP purposes. But first, let's start with a little PvP clip. Oh, hi, there's a priest. What are you going to do? I'm just going to UA you and put corruption up. What are you going to do? Fear me? Oh, your friends are coming. Hmm, well, then I guess you'll survive, won't you? Oh, no, you won't. If you dispel UA, you're just going to die. Now, what about a hunter? Hunters are strong this phase, aren't they? Well, I dot the guy, haunt, dot him. Uh, I don't use drain life yet, which I should probably use first. Oh, he misses the trap entirely and only scatters me then. If he would have done that earlier and gained some distance, probably he could beat me, because hunters actually are pretty strong, especially if they scatter you, then they uh, slow trap you, and they just keep kiting. And if you cannot connect to them, then actually uh, there is a chance you can lose, especially... Yeah, if they start with enough distance. In this case, however, this guy clearly was not up to the task. Oh, now, now my pet actually died, so I'm in kind of a trouble because I have no more soul link, no more master demonologist. But uh, yeah, didn't work again. I'm pretty well geared, and the self heal is pretty crazy. As always, try to fear. I mean, the moment he pulled his pet off, I feared immediately, and uh, yeah, then he just died again. Are there any better hunters around here in this Arati Basin? Oh, there, there's one. He stuns me into the trap. There's no way I can connect here. Okay, I can haunt. I cannot drain life because he's out of range. I can just apply corruption and agony, and I can't really connect. So yeah, I was low HP, but here I just die. And uh, this morning I was actually working on my macros a little bit while I was in Blasted Lands, and a hunter attacked me. Uh, this guy also missed his trap, but he did get the disorient. So the thing you want to do is you want to get to the hunter to make sure he's in range. This is what you want to do as a warlock. Um, if he lands all his spells, you'll have a tough time, but in this case, uh, it was fairly easy to just run him down and to kill him. Now let's get to the items. Starting by the non-set pieces, uh, we start with the neck, where the raid neck is actually the best one. Uh, the Gnome Regan raid neck is the second best one, followed by the Ghost Shard Talisman you can get in Scarlet Monastery. Uh, you can solo farm this actually, so uh, if you have nothing, then go for this one. Uh, on the back slot, uh, these are actually not in a particular order for the back. They're all viable. Uh, it just comes down to preference. I'm still running the Blood Rot Cloak as it's uh, what's available and what I have. But the other two could be arguably better. It's really a question of preference. And if you're lacking stamina, you could go for the Sergeant's Cloak, the PvP item as well. For the bracer slot, it's also very straightforward. You should go for the engineering bracers. They're the best. Followed very closely by the uh, Warsong bracers. And if you don't have anything, you could just go for some Shadow Wrath from the auction house. But really, you want to be aiming to get one of these. And I think the new profession items also are not that expensive. Uh, so as a PvP player, probably you have engineering and then just go for these ones. Um, on the belt slot, I think there are two options. Uh, either it's the Court of the Untamed, which uh, costs 15 of these offerings. Uh, you can farm Zul for Rock very quick. You can do five runs per hour, or actually they take, I think, about seven or eight minutes. So this is fairly quick to get. I think you'll ta it'll take you three, four hours. Um, if you don't have that and you want to go Defiler's Cloth Girdle, it's fine as well. It's a slight downgrade, though. For the rings... In any case, I would be running the Eye of the Blood Moon, which is the new Stranglethorn Veil Ring. It just has great stats and spell damage, which I really like. Um, as a second ring, I'm actually running Roar of the Dream, because I like the fact that it has 14 stamina. And I also like the proc, because I find the 66 additional spell damage to be quite game-changing in terms of damage, because uh, you have to consider if you're running around with 300 spell damage, a proc of 66, that's... That's like 22% additional spell damage that you're getting for that uh, time. So it is a big damage boost, uh, especially considering our spells scale fairly well with the spell damage. So I really like this one. You could be running the Underworld Band, but then you're giving up 4 stamina. And really, 14 shadow damage is not all that much when you compare to a proc with 66. Mm, the Cyclopean Band is also an option that I probably wouldn't use. Um, but yeah, it has less stamina and less spell damage than the Underworld, but you could use it. Or you could go for the Arati Basin one, uh, which is also another option. Talking about the trinkets, the best trinket by far is the Greater Insignia, which gets you out of any crowd control except silence. So uh, as ever since they changed that, and 
for everyone who's not running org this is anyway the great way to get out of stuns um, i would recommend anyone to use this i even use this in open world scenarios even when i'm farming some items i play on a pvp server so i won't always want to be prepared if a rogue opens or some other class opens me as you know i'm running the dark moon card torment which is very rng based um, if it does proc it'll make your opponent wander so it procs from damaging spells and dot applications not from ticks however and uh, i like this because when it happens it's usually game changing dual changing whatever then the opponent really is screwed however a lot of times it will not proc and then you're getting zero value out of it in that case probably you should be running the raid on use trinket now we are playing a dot class why do i say on use trinket well i like 1v1 situations and in 1v1 situations if you pop this then press or if you pop this and then press haunt and drain life uh, and maybe apply in a corruption they will all be boosted significantly in terms of damage so this is a very nice uh, item to get the dark moon card decay i tried this it is like an additional two percent damage or so and it's decent in rates but uh, for pvp i found it not to fit my playstyle and not to be that useful um, if you don't like or have any of these, you could be going with the new, with just a random spell damage trinket, either the Nomregan one, BFD one, or in my opinion, this new one is the best because it has shadow res and fire resistance on it. Um, and another option, if you're lacking the stamina, you could be going the new exalted uh, trinkets from the new faction. Uh, they provide 10 stamina and a on use effect that you won't be using because you're not a healer and not a melee class but uh, still it has stamina and another option could be running the rune of the perfection for the additional spell pen which is very nice and i still see some of my spells resisting however since i'm running eight or nine percent hit in total i'm already well over the cap that i need so i think this uh, item is not worth it this uh, to the same extent as it was last season next uh, we have the utility trinkets i'll make this quick so what world of warcraft classic is all about utility items and utility effects so you should be using some kind of a trinket bar that allows you to switch your trinkets quickly especially when your insignia which has a five minute cooldown for example is on cd uh, of course there's the stopwatch there are the reflector this phase however we can only use the ice reflector would be nice to use the others but obviously it doesn't work um, then we have the Goblin Mortar, which is a big stun and damage uh, on your opponent. However, it can backfire, which means you will get stunned and, and damaged, which is one of the reasons I don't use it a lot. I don't like the, the fact that it can backfire. The Arcanite Dragonling is going to be very strong in PvE in the raid situations. Um, it can help you secure a duel. Same as a Attack Chicken is also very, very strong. The Defender of Timbermaw also... And then there's a new trinket, which is this on use that will increase the damage of a dot. I think it's it's not that good at all. I will never use it, but uh, I wanted to mention this here as well because some people ask me what I think of it. Um, the carrot on the stick is in the, a utility trinket that I use the most, um, simply because whenever I mount, I use it because uh, getting getting to your opponent faster or running away faster is of course very very strong. One other small piece of advice, guys. Um, I'm always running around at 175% speed. Uh, the regular would be 160% uh, with the mount increasing it by 60%. But it is for sure worth it to grab a carrot, to have a second pair of boots with mithril spurs enchanted on it, or with done by a blacksmith, and uh, to have the uh, minor speed increase on the gloves. So in that way, in open world, it's pretty easy to chase down others or to escape when you have to. Next up, I have the wand slot, uh, the nightmare trophy, which is the new raid wand is the best. It has the nine damage and five intellect on it. And it has the biggest, the highest DPS of all wands, which sometimes you want to be wanding as a soul link warlock. And then it's very nice to use. Second best would be a green one from the auction house. You want the wizard's hand, and in this case of Shadow Wrath, 10 is the highest roll. Uh, you can't get anything higher this phase. Um, and the next one would be the Nomregan Mechano Gear Strider, Gear Shifter, or the Necrotic Wand from Scarlet Monastery would be your option if you don't have any raid items and you cannot afford the auction house item because these green Shadow Wrath items, especially the wand, actually is quite expensive on my server. Talking about the weapon slot, 
as you can see, the number one choice here is clearly the Soul Harvester, not due to the stats, but simply due to the looks. I mean, look at this. I mean, who wouldn't want to run around with a Scythe? Uh, as an undead, it's extra cool because you can cannibalize your opponents after you kill them and they just see some zombie with a Scythe eating them. Ah, for me, it's just the best one. Obviously, the hit here is really not needed. The damage is, is okay, but not, not the best. And also, the stats are quite lacking compared to the Nightmare Focus Staff, which would be my choice if I were going purely for stats. I like the huge intellect and stamina on this, especially the stamina. Um, but obviously, you can also be running a main hand with an offhand, which in this case, it would be this new dagger from the raid paired up with the Drake Stone. Now, you can see here, I wrote the stats. So the staff will be nine, 29 spell damage, 30 stam, 29 int, while the main hand offhand will be 50 spell damage, 12 stamina, 11 int. So I think here, uh, comparing this, actually, the main hand and offhand would be bis in terms of... Uh, overall stats because I, I value the 21 spell damage higher than the 18 stamina but this comes and also you 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 have less int obviously but int i don't value that much so uh, these are both totally fine and viable options it comes down to preference and if you don't have anything of that yet even the last phase items which i was using the dagger and the umbral crystal are still are still okay <clears throat> And the big advantage when you're running a main hand and have an offhand is you can actually benefit from using utility offhands. As first, there's the spell stone for everyone who doesn't know it. Whenever you, you craft this as a warlock and whenever you use it, whenever you craft it, you equip it and you can use it and it'll remove all your magic debuffs. So uh, when you're fighting a shadow priest or a mage or so, it can be very, very useful. It also absorbs some magic damage. Um, it's a situational item uh, that is very good. The medicine pouch heals you. I don't like it at all. I'm never running it. I just wanted to mention it. And the school of impending doom is a, just a nice escape tool. You will lose a lot of life, however. So also this, I don't use that much. Okay, guys, in this next segment, I want to talk to you about the actual um, set items, that being head, shoulder, chest, gloves, legs, and boots. And basically, I used um, 60 upgrades to configure all type of gear setups that I could use. For example, this is my typical go-to gear. This is Listery 1. It is, a th it is a green lens, robes of servitude, and the tank boots from the uh, raid, and otherwise three-piece PvP set. And you see I come out to 3.7k life and 229 spell damage. Now this is completely unbuffed. I have no buffs in this uh, in this section and I have my soul harvester so it's obviously not going to be your ideal final stats but this is just the current setup I'm running. Now on the next this would be my second build is swapping out just the tank boots for the defiler boots. This will boost my life by about 100 but it will reduce my shadow damage by 13. Uh, next setup is just tank legs PvP boots, so I switch these around because the tank leggies are actually pretty good. Uh, here you can see I have also 226 shadow damage, uh, similar to the first, but we'll get into the stats in a moment. For now, let me just show you the different builds. Here it's the PvP set plus the tank set, tank three-piece, chest, legs, and boots, PvP, helm, shoulder, and gloves. Then here we have the PvP set three-piece, tank two-piece, and we have the Robes of Servitude to combine that to make it a full six items. In the next, we have the PvP set, Robes of Servitude, only the tank legs and the Defiler boots. You see this is the, spec the set where you have the highest health. And in this one, you have the PvP set, the Lens, the tank set as two-piece. And in the last one, you have the full PvP set. Now, why am I showing you guys all these different options and not just one BIS gear setup? Well... Because, as a matter of fact, there are many ver uh, viable choices. So here I made a little table showing you all the different eight gearing options. And basically, uh, you can, for me personally, I value one spell damage slightly higher than one stem. This is just how I value. Why do I think spell damage is still the best stat? Well, I think um, what's nice about it as a soul link warlock, we have a 30% damage reduction. And um, all of the healing that we actually can do 
will be 100% of healing, right? We, there's no 30% healing reduction. Meaning with all the healing we're doing across Haunt, Drain Life, and um, Death Coil, actually healing is super, super powerful and spell damage and self-heal scale. So that's why I think spell damage is a bit more, a bit better than stamina, especially if we have a health pool that's big enough to survive any initial burst, which I think all of these specs have. They have at least 3.7k unbuffed, and the top one has even 3.9k. Now, looking at the at the spell damage amounts, you can see that these three builds really stand out. Um, you can look at the HP. This one is best. This is the second best, but it's only small amounts. As you can see, uh, this is 40 HP more than this first one, but it's three spell damage less. So basically, we're looking at... Uh, trade off four stamina against four uh, three spell damage right however the, the number one build also has one percent more crit um, now i put these um, uh, stats in the order that i would see them i would prior for me personally i value spell damage most hp second most crit i'm kind of still trying to figure out how important it is but they're all fairly close together to one another anyway except if you run the full pvp set then you actually have a whole lot more crit uh, but at the same time you have very very little spell damage you're missing out 27 so i'm not sure um, which one how to value crit yet armor obviously is nice but um, it's not absolutely necessary hit is kind of useless because we're running six percent from su suppression anyway however versus priests and rogues it can be nice to have some additional um, uh, additional hit to land your fears coils haunts and uh, and then last but not least we have mana which also is the least important stat um yeah not having a nice mana pool is is helpful and it, it's helpful to give you some sustain let's say on the long run but for me it's the worst stat out of all these so my point you can pick whatever you think is yeah fits most to your play style um just one thing or what I, I put down the most important things down here the emerald set is a no not enough stats overall i mean i guess this is clear because it's more or less the worst pvp set and the malevolent raid dps set is also a no because it does not have enough stamina so these you can basically take out but in general i think the sword itemization in this phase is actually very very nice um, obviously it's not so exciting when you go into a raid and there are no big big upgrades to get but at the same time it's a lot of fun at least to me to be able to even run a let's say bis or close to bis pvp setup that consists of zero rate items for example my, my my second build right there's not a single rate item in it and looking at the stats it does come very very close to the other builds that include the rate items so uh, when i say no rate item what i really mean is no set item is required um, from the raid in build two obviously you still want the raid neck uh, maybe a raid weapon and ideally also a raid wand um, so if you can get those, it, it's still this. Now, coming to my personal favorite build, I mean, I have been running build number one uh, with just the uh, nightmarish boots. Raid number two, no, build number two is also nice, but I just switched because yesterday I was fortunate enough to get another token. So now I'm actually running build number seven, which to me is the best if, I mean, all of these builds are very, very close. Don't get me wrong. But build number seven, in my opinion, is the best because we are very high on the spell power, which is my highest priority. But compared to the two others that uh, that are also very high on spell power, we just have this additional 100 armor, which I like. Health is also more on the higher end. And we get the 1% um, hit additional, which is not needed, but it's a nice bonus. So you could make an argument for most of these builds, but for me right now, Provided you have the raid items, I like to go for number seven. If you don't have them, go for number two or go for number one if you have one token. Um, yeah, thanks a lot, guys, uh, for tuning in. And uh, I'm going to leave you with me killing a warrior in Badlands this morning. Um, obviously, he didn't have a chance.